Hello and welcome to my channel. This is part two of the SDR console <clears throat> video where I uh, tell you a few more things that I forgot to tell you in the first one. <laughs> and perhaps the most important of those is to know how to tune it. Um, that's quite important. So let's go and have a look at that. I can't make my scene switching work so I'm just going to do it manually like that. Sorry about that. And so there's the SDR console software. <clears throat> it is currently displaying 433. 0.9434 megahertz and if I want a different frequency all I have to do is type it on the keyboard so I'm going to type in one two three it's not working let's click on it one two three no why does that not work one two three oh you have to click in there okay so you have to click in this area here the top half then I can type one two three point four five six and it'll go to that frequency one two three point four five six which you can see up here other ways of changing the frequency are you can go in steps like this, 100 kilohertz, that was 10 kilohertz, 1 megahertz steps, just by rolling the mouse wheel. You do mouse over the digit you want to change and roll the mouse wheel and it changes and it's very, very quick as you can see. Oh, what's that? <laughs> that's gone again. So um, you can have a lot of fun with this. Um, if I go to an HF band, oh, so let's go to memories and um, <clears throat> let's choose that one. Oh, wrong antenna. You can see how to use this now. SMAC, PNC C I want. So there's the antenna that I want. Turn on the audio output and there's a signal. Oh, that's a new one as well. Goodness me. It's getting busier on HF. So I can also tune just by rolling the mouse wheel up and down and it's going in 100 hertz steps because that's the step size that I set in part one of the video. But you can change that to whatever you like. If I go to uh, CW mode, so let's go CW upper. Now, when I scroll, you see it's changing in 10 hertz steps when I scroll in here. So you've got a finer control. You can go 1 hertz steps if you want, or if you want to jump, then you can just scroll with mouse over one of these digits. So it's very easy to change frequencies, which is something that perhaps I should have showed you in the first video, how to enter a frequency. So um, that's me again. Let's uh, have a look at the list and see what else I wanted to tell you. Um, <clears throat> how to change the bandwidth in the S meter. So let's have a look at that. Let's go and um, switch back to the desktop <coughs> and the receiver. So how to change the bandwidth? Simply go home and then bandwidth. And here you can see it sets two megahertz. The RSPDX will go up to 10 megahertz bandwidth, so it'll show that much spectrum. Let's click on that. And it's switching now to 10 megahertz bandwidth, which is quite a lot. I need to zoom out to see all of it, of course, because we're a bit zoomed in at the moment. So previously when I zoomed out, it would only show you 2 MHz of spectrum. Now I can zoom all the way out to 10 MHz of spectrum. So that's like 5 up to 15. So that's 10 MHz. So there's a, a whole spectrum, which is fun to look at. There's a, one of those tuning signals going across there again. What's going on today? From uh, 8.5 to 10.5 MHz so far. And I think it's going to keep going. Maybe it's some kind of atmospheric sond atmospheric sounding system where they sweep very wide frequencies, measure what's reflected back. <laughs> Looks a bit antisocial, doesn't it? I hope they have a license for all these broadcast frequencies they're crossing over. There we are. It's going to go through 20 meters up here as well. I can see it. So um, something else that uh, <laughs> I wanted to show you quickly is uh, if we go to view, um, you can change a lot of settings. You can have peak holding and uh, peak searching on signals, all sorts of things. The simplest thing that I wanted to change first of all was the S meter display to be this uh, this format. If you go in here, signal meter, you can have analog. Looks like that, old fashioned. You can have none, very minimalistic. I like the digital one because it takes up less space and uh, gives me, uh, I don't know, just a, a reading that I like of DBM in the way I want to see it. So that's that. Um, easy to change. You can change a lot of things on this software. Um, the other thing I want to show you is audio output. It's muted at the moment. If I turn that on, then we can hear the audio. And that's currently going to the speakers. And the software detects all of the audio output uh, devices on Windows. <clears throat> and that's my monitor as built-in speakers. I didn't even know it had until this software showed me. If I switch to that, it comes out of those nasty little speakers. That's the main ones. But what I have installed also is the... Um, VB audio virtual cable, which you can uh, 
and still there are plenty of YouTube videos about how to find that. Maybe I even have a note about that. Let's have a quick look on here. Um, <clears throat> I haven't put the link in there, but you can Google for VB virtual cable. I think it's from a French person who wrote it and you can install it. Oh, it's here. So VB audio cable. Again, I'll put this in the description. Um, you have to run setup as admin. That's worth knowing. If you don't, it may not work or you won't have access rights to everything. So this is the VB audio software download for Windows or Mac, but uh, make sure you run it as admin. That's, that's useful. Anyway, so if we go back to the SDR, and I choose my um, output as the VB cable, let's turn that down a bit, virtual cable, <coughs> and it's working. Let's go to uh, 20 meters FT8 frequency. So we go to uh, memories and then 14.074, which is there. Let's zoom, let's put it in the center. Let's zoom in a bit. <coughs> and normally I, I use two megahertz bandwidth, not this wide, but uh, let's have a look and listen to make sure we can hear it before we go too far with this. Yep, there's some signals in there. Zoom a bit more. There they all are. And what I'm going to do is switch that output, audio output, to the cable, virtual audio cable. And then if you go to the WSJTX software, which is already installed and running, and set to 20 meters, you can see here the audio input indicator gives a nice healthy audio level coming from this uh, SDR console receiver via the audio cable in configurations in WSJTX. Um, I've set up a configuration called VB Virtual Cable, which is currently switched to. There's various other radios. And so I switch it to this one, and then you can um, <coughs> set the settings in settings so that you have for audio the VB cable input and output. And it works. And you can see the spectrum of the audio coming into WSJTX. And here it is decoding the signals. And I've got uploading switched on to the uh, monitoring websites and so that uh, I can see what I'm receiving on the map of the world. So it's very simple to set up as well <coughs> so that you can use this for receiving WSJTX. I don't like looking at this wide bandwidth. You can see all these noise sources, all these QRM sources um, in this domestic environment where I'm living. And as the evening rolls on, they get worse and worse. <laughs> sort of depressing to look at, so uh, I'm not going to look at that. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe if you would like to, and I look forward to reading your comments and questions below. Goodbye. Stop.